world of spirituality is often confusing and misleading and there's a lot of questionable information out there from people telling you that you need to fast for 10 days to reach permanent enlightenment or stop manifesting when mercury is in retrograde because it'll bring you bad luck well we're here to put an end to all of that and and give you clarity on some of those crazy myths but let's be real some of them are wild and wacky in a world where content is available at your fingertips we have to have discernment on who we follow and the information that we absorb stay tuned because we're about to debunk 10 of the most common spiritual myths welcome to rico living i'm saga and i'm manpri let's get into it first one is the one technique myth. In a world where catchy hooks seem to be getting traction, a popular myth in spirituality is you just need this one technique to change your life. Which firstly is a bit of an exaggeration, but really it's not true. If there was genuinely one technique to fix everyone's problems, we would be living in a different world. Now there are tools and techniques that are out there that are very helpful, but this isn't a one size fits all. One technique which might work for me may not be helpful for you. So be wary when you see this type of content. You may find a technique that is useful, but it won't transform your life overnight. Spirituality is an ongoing process of growth and expansion, not a one-time thing. Number two, healers can heal you. Whilst healers, coaches and therapists may have skills and techniques available, they cannot physically or emotionally heal you. When we choose to go for healing, whether that's Reiki, hypnotherapy or anything else, the practitioner is there only to facilitate your healing. You're the one that actually heals yourself. The decision itself of wanting to heal opens you up to your healing journey. The practitioner only guides you to your own healing capabilities which has been inside you this whole time. So if someone ever says to you, I can heal you, approach with caution. Myth number three five hour meditations. Ever heard someone tell you that you need to meditate for five hours or wake up at 4am to start your spiritual practice? At times it may feel like you want to deepen your spirituality but it often feels unachievable and unrealistic by setting these as your benchmark. We all have big commitments in our lives whether that's work, children or something else. The best thing is to find a routine that actually works for you. Even 15 minutes of meditation is just as effective. Remember, something is better than nothing. So take off the unnecessary pressure and let go of any guilt that you may feel for not meditating as long as someone else. Remember, it's not a competition. Number four gurus have all the answers. This is an important one. With all the content available in today's social media age, we must increase our discernment. Whilst receiving advice is amazing, not all of it will resonate with you. It's important not to put spiritual teachers on a pedal stool. Whilst we hope the knowledge they are sharing is coming from pure intentions, this may not be the case for everyone, or their advice can be swayed by their own lived experience and personal judgment. There's a reason why we may feel off when listening to advice or just a gut feeling that the energy isn't in alignment with you. There's only one person who knows what's best for you and that's you. Trust your instincts and only follow guidance that feels connected to you. Be careful not to blindly follow somebody without checking in with your own intuition. Myth number five up in the clouds. Spiritual people tend to have this reputation that they're up in the clouds or away with the fairies. But do fairies actually exist? If you look at any TV show or movie, they always show the spiritual person as this hippie who is so out of touch with reality. They seem out of touch with reality because they have awakened to what reality really is. They are aware of how they are and secondly, how the world around them works. They're also very conscious of the behaviors of others you'll likely find spiritual people consciously disconnecting themselves from news, drama and negativity as a whole because they know the importance of protecting their energy. In fact, spiritual people are one of the most grounded people you can meet because they're the ones who are confronting their shadow and the depths of their being. They are always seeking growth and ways to improve. Maybe we are just a little bit up in the clouds, but is that such a bad thing? Number six 
free from material desires. Now this is where people tend to get a little bit heated. I've seen people say things like, oh you don't need money, you're spiritual. Or she's making money by selling spirituality. There's this perception that spiritual people have to be free from material desires or by wanting material things, it somehow makes us less authentic. Now look, I get it. I also had the same mentality before I really understood what abundance is. Spirituality is about expanding our consciousness and that means expansion in all areas of your life, including wealth. Having material desires should not be seen as a negative unless that's the only thing you want. At the end of the day, we're in this physical reality that is full of things that can make us feel comfortable and at ease. We're here to live life to the full and experience everything that life has to offer. So don't feel guilty for wanting to fly first class or wanting a certain type of lifestyle because you deserve it. There's also a misconception that asking people to pay for your spiritual services is not genuine. But personally, I would rather charge someone for my services or selling a product knowing that I'm going to be helping them in their healing journey rather than making money from something that won't provide value to others. Myth number seven, spirituality is not science. We've been brought up to believe that in order for something to be true, there needs to be tangible proof for it. There's a famous quote by Dr. Wayne Dyer that goes, there's an energy in the universe. There is something that is inside each and every one of us. And it's also in the universe. And you are connected to it in a way that is often perceived to be aloof from us because it's invisible, because it's in the world of what we call spirit, in the world that that is not material. Just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not real. Science is now catching up to spirituality. The works of Deepak Chopra, Joe Dispenza, Bruce Lipton and Greg Braden, who are all doctors and scientists by the way, share proven and documented studies about spirituality, medicine and quantum physics. You can check out some of their books like Becoming Supernatural or Quantum Healing to name a few. Spirituality is becoming science. It's just just a matter of time. Number eight, it's too deep. Many people dismiss spirituality as something that's too deep for them. But let's look at what that actually means. Whenever I hear that phrase, it usually means that people are not willing to confront the part of themselves that need looking at, whether that's confronting their childhood, fears or bad habits, it usually means that there's a reluctancy to change. So you see, it's not that spirituality is too deep, it's really truth that people are avoiding. So if you're on a spiritual or healing journey, it's so important that you keep going because your truth will inevitably help others to awaken to their own truth. And when enough people awaken to their own truth, we begin to see a shift in consciousness on our planet. Oh, was that too deep? Myth number nine, spirituality or religion. Touchy subject, I know. But if you've stayed with us up until this point, just hold on a little bit longer. There's a huge debate that spirituality is better than religion or that you need to pick one or the other or that one religion is the absolute truth. But that's not the case at all. You can still believe in aspects of religion and still be spiritual. Without generalizing, there are spiritual people who don't follow the rules of religion but still believe in Christ consciousness or Hindu gods as interdimensional beings. They know that there is still truth in religion and view religion from a spiritual lens. We believe that all religions carry some truth in their own way. Being spiritual isn't an all or nothing idea. You can choose to believe whatever resonates with you the most. It's important to give others space to have their own views and beliefs even if it's different from yours. And finally, number 10. Spiritual people are always peaceful. Ah, if only this was the case. It's definitely something that we aspire to be, but spirituality is more than just being calm and zen all the time. As part of the journey, we will encounter challenges, painful and dark moments. We tend to lose friends, family, and question our own existence. As part of this, we may not always be our best selves, but give yourself some grace for the growth that is happening. A big part of spiritual growth is finding your voice, increasing your self-worth, and protecting 
protecting your energy, which can be messy and uncomfortable. But even through all these things, we still find a way to come back to alignment with ourselves and find inner peace. You can't be perfect all the time. You may still need a little cry or release frustration, but the key is, can we recognize the pain and then bring ourselves back to alignment. So there you have it, 10 myths of spirituality debunked. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more content like this. And we'll see you on the next one.